Dr. Paul Mason, interviewed by Dr. Mariella Gland. Vegetable myths and electrolytes, sodium, critical to cell and bone health. I don't have a strong opinion on it. I, I, I know a lot of people do, you know, say that nose to tail and so on and so forth. I, I don't think you need to go chasing li- if you don't like it. I, I think there's plenty of, uh, you know, people out there who are in great health who don't eat offal, who don't eat the, uh, the odds and ends of the animal. And certainly if we have a look at the nutrient analysis of things, and you mentioned eggs. I mean, eggs is nature's multivitamin. You know, you, you know as we said before, it's got a whole functioning organism that comes out of it. You know, there, there can be nothing left wanting from a nutrient perspective from an egg yolk. So I think if you're, you know, you're having enough foods like that, the nutrient density of animal foods by and large is so much more than plant foods anyway. Uh, I don't think that you have to have liver. You know, to pop it up. And for me yeah, personally, I, I don't eat a lot of liver. I think I'm a little bit afraid of stopping all vegetables if you don't have internal organs. I think uh, you, you need to complement that. Well, no, well, th- this is a common theme um, because, and what it really shows is that the level of indoctrination that we've had mm-hmm. from these dietary guidelines that tell us that vegetables are an essentially healthy food. And if you actually sit down and you, you go and do a Google search and you say, okay, what nutrients are in vegetables? What, what nutrients are in vegetables that I can't get from meat? You're going to have a very short list because it's not going to have anything on it. So if you have a look for essential nutrients in veggies that you can't get from animal foods, there's none. There, there, there is literally none. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, but this is the problem. I mean, it's almost like a religious indoctrination. You, you, once it's in your head, it's almost impossible to get out. We've been force fed this, this notion that, fruits and vegetables are incredibly healthy foods. Right. And but what about, what about the, 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 the soup broth? This, what is your feeling? Bone broth, this? bone broth. I don't do that. I don't do that. So here's the thing about bone broth. You know, if you've ever made a bone broth, you'll see all this sediment at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. And most people I know won't drink that sediment. And that's where it's at. Where do you think all the minerals and all everything is there? You know, when they've actually, you know, they do an analysis on a typical bone broth, looking at the potassium and stuff like that, it's actually not that high. It's it, there's nothing particularly special about bone broth unless you're spooning in, you know, that sediment at the bottom, which you know, just imagine just having a bit of crunchy gravel. You know, it, it's not doesn't appeal to me. And I'm a bit of a hedonist. I, I eat what I feel like. I eat what I want. I eat what gives me pleasure. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll be honest, that doesn't, the thought of that doesn't fill me with joy. So you mentioned before that the ketogenic diet is a dehydrating diet. Yeah. So it's because in the kidneys, there's four transporters that tell the body to hold on to sodium. And they are all stimulated by insulin. You go on a ketogenic diet, that is a salt wasting, a sodium wasting state. Your body loses sodium. You lose sodium, you lose volume because sodium is what holds the water in it, what attracts the fluid. So that's how a ketogenic diet is a dehydrating diet. So... If you're having a chicken broth, a, a, you know, chicken soups or what have you, there's a lot of sodium in that. That is basically correcting a sodium deficiency that reliably occurs when people start a ketogenic diet until their kidneys figure it out. Yeah, no, no, of course. And it's, uh, but it's just amazing to see the results. I mean, it's just a, a before and after. It's, it's, there's something magical to this. It's not, not, it's not just adding salt to the meat or et cetera. There, there, there's, there's, I guess, the combination of the fluid plus the salts. But uh, well, there might be potassium in there as well. It might be a mix of electrolytes. If we have a look at some of the studies, so um, Steve Finney, when they, they did their studies on, uh, you know, back in the 80s on people getting them on treadmill tests and stuff like that, they figured out unless they aggressively and specifically supplemented with sodium, their performance suffered dramatically. They were basically incapable of intense physical exercise if they didn't get enough sodium. Yeah. And we have some other studies that show things like potassium and phosphate. Um, nitrogen, which is basically protein, um, studies that you can't do nowadays. So they had people you know, on intravenous feedings and they were monitoring their, their body compartments, their bone, their fat and their muscle. And they said, what happens if we just completely eliminate sodium from their feeding? Let's see what happens. So okay. stuff that you couldn't do nowadays. So what happened? So their ability to form muscle tissue dropped by two thirds. What happens when they took potassium out? Their ability to form muscle tissue dropped by about 100%. Whoa, okay. Um, so these electrolytes and these other substances, they, ta- they have a, you know, we, we often pay lip service because we've heard it repeated, oh, electrolytes are important. But when you actually ask people, why do you think electrolytes are important? They can't give you a good answer. They just know, very similar to what you've just said, when you have it, you just feel so much better. And I mean, it's because it's maintenance of intravascular volume. And if you're trying to build more tissue, 
we, we have these things called intracellular electrolytes, extracellular. We know that inside cells, you have a lot of potassium. So if you're going to be trying to form new cells, you better be providing the building blocks. This is the same theory as building bone. You can't build bone with calcium alone. You need protein. You can't build new cells of any sorts without all the required ingredients for inside that cell. That includes electrolytes. Right. And that's why giving sodium is good for building bone. So in the Women's Health Initiative study, they actually looked at sodium intake and they found that a low sodium intake was significantly correlated with a higher risk of hip fracture. Dr. Glenn tried full-scale carnivore for about a month eating mostly liver and eggs. The question, how critical is eating nose to tail? Dr. Mason says, if you don't like liver, there are plenty of people in great health who don't eat the odds and ends of the animal. Eggs are nature's multivitamin. It has a whole organism that comes out of it. There is nothing missing nutritionally from an egg yolk. Nutrient density of animal foods is so much more than plant foods. Personally, I don't eat a lot of liver. Dr. Glanz says, I'm afraid of stopping eating all vegetables if you don't eat internal organs. Dr. Mason replies, this shows the level of indoctrination we have had from the dietary guidelines that say vegetables are essential healthy foods. If you search, what essential nutrients do I get from vegetables that I cannot get from meat? The list will have nothing on it. There are literally no essential nutrients that veggies have that meat does not have. There are none. We have been indoctrinated to believe that fruits and vegetables are incredibly healthy foods. What about bone broth? All the minerals, potassium, etc., are in the sediment at the bottom of the pot. The minerals in the broth itself is not particularly high. Dr. Mason says, I am a hedonist. I eat what I want. I don't eat bone broth. Ketogenic diet can be dehydrating. The kidneys have four transporters telling the body to hold on to sodium. They are all stimulated by insulin. On keto, your body wastes or loses sodium because the insulin is now lower, and you lose water, which was held by that sodium. When eating chicken soup or bone broth containing lots of sodium, that helps in transition to keto dieting until your kidneys figure out the true sodium needs. Keto beginners eating chicken soup have amazing results. It might be the potassium, a mix of electrolytes. Dr. Mason says, Dr. Steve Finney in studies showed that unless keto athletes got enough sodium, their performance suffered greatly. He cites other studies. Patients given potassium, phosphate, nitrogen, in intravenous feeding. They thought, what if we eliminate sodium? The experiment result, without sodium, the ability to form muscle tissue dropped by two thirds. Then they tried, let's eliminate potassium. The ability to form muscle tissue dropped by 100%. Electrolytes and these other substances are critical. People may just say, when I have them, I feel so much better. The reason is, these maintain intravascular volume. If you're trying to build new muscle cells, you better provide the building blocks. Like building bone, calcium alone is not enough. You need the protein. You cannot build new cell without all the ingredients required for inside the cell, including electrolytes. Bone health requires sodium. In the Women's Health Initiative, they found those with low sodium had high rates of hip fracture. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones.